Hello everyone, I am Bradley Sawyer, Associate Professor of Computer and Information Science at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. This video today is the next in my continuing series of design patterns. We're going to look at the flyway design pattern here in this video with, uh, of course, a C++ example going off explaining everything. So in my mind, the flyway pattern is just a map with extra steps. And as we'll see in my example today, that any resource manager is essentially a flyweight pattern. It's an object that minimizes memory usage by sharing as much data as possible with other similar objects. And so, you know, say, because I'm thinking of a video game and thinking of like a 2D top-down game where there's walls and walls and walls, hundreds of walls sitting around, like, are you going to want to take that giant PNG file and just and just load that hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times? Well, probably not. You want to load that one time and then access it over and over and over again because you only need to allocate the memory for it once and then you can access it in hundreds and hundreds of places. So it's saying it's a way to use objects in large numbers when a simple repeated representation would be an unacceptable amount of memory, exactly what I just described. So often some of the parts of the state can be shared and it's common practice to hold them in external data structures and pass them to objects temporarily when they are used. So essentially any resource manager, I want to add a resource, I want to modify a resource, I want to get a resource, I want to delete a resource. The manager does all the work of allocating the memory, removing the memory, giving the memory back. And at the end of the day, you're really not the wiser. You're just, you know, just just doing using the public API that you get, and uh, you know, you're just happy with whatever you got going for you here. So, in our the example we're going to do, we're going to look into managing managing graphic files. I'm just going to set up, and we're not really going to do anything with it. We're just setting it up as an example. So I go, here's a PNG, here's a JPEG, here's a GIF. And they say here that the classic example of the flyway pattern is something for like a word processor. But again, it's anything where you have, where you're maintaining data and, and you're maintaining things that are like going to be used in many places, like this. It might be desirable for each character in a document, every character to have a font outline and all sorts of extra data. Because, you know, like, if, you know, you, you've tried out, you've used Word, and every time I type something nowadays, it all has to be... It basically comes out in HTML and it applies CSS to it and all these things. Like, how does it all work, right? So all these things, you know, using a GIF file, using all sorts of crazy stuff. But anyway, getting around to it. Instead, if for every character that I put into my, you know, instead of setting up a whole new character every single time, oh, here's a C, here's a C, I can reference the same glyph object, you know, because it, the, the C is a C is a C or the D is a D is a D. I don't have to new it up every single time. I don't have to have a new C object when I can just reference the same one C object over and over and over again. So here is the sequence diagram for everything that we're going to have. So there's going to be, a, the client is going to kind of work together with everybody here. The client is basically the main program. The flyweight factory, if you want to think of it, is the manager. And it's just man, it's creating and sharing all these flyweights, all these images that are going to come around, or all these little characters and whatnot. So, again, of course, you can go to Wikipedia for more information. This is just a quick and dirty, you know, description so I can get to the fun part so I can show off the C++ code. But you can kind of see how the client works with fl the flyweight base class and its derived classes, as does the flyweight factory. So that covers the discussion. So let's take a look here at the flyweight pattern here to show you what I've done. Let me see if I can get this down to this here. There we go. So you can see I have my class. I have a constructor. I have a destructor. Uh, this is not meant to be derived from, at least at the current time, so I don't have a virtual destructor. And I have three functions. I have an add image, delete image, get image. So I'm, you know, and the add will actually modify, you'll see when we get there. And I'm holding under the hood a map. String is the uh, key, and or key value pair. So string is the key and an image pointer is the value. So if I say like, hey, get me the image that's called Brad, it'll get me that 
it'll get me that resource that's stored under the hood. In the game maker, it, that's basically kind of how it works. Whatever that resource key that you're storing is a string, you know, the, or is a, you know, basically a string, it'll get you access to the actual resource if you use it. Okay, so basic stuff here, and this is templated again, so I don't, if I want to create a, a type T, I don't have to come up with all sorts of crazy measures if I want to create a JPEG or an animation or this or that kind of file. I, I, I knew everything up here. I do not knew anything up anywhere else uh, and then pass it in because that could cause all sorts of crazy trouble. You always want to maintain newing and deleting uh, you want to contain that as much as you can. That's why uh, you might see in my other videos, if you've seen comments basically saying that I should be using shared pointers and all sorts of things, where that kind of removes a lot of the thought process, uh, basically trying to basically trying to simulate garbage collection in a language that doesn't truly have garbage collection, you know, compared to Java and Python and whatnot. Okay, so this add image function, I pass it, I have my map, of course it starts out empty, and anytime, like over here, it starts out empty, and the destructor just goes ahead and destroys all the image pointers. You know, so it's a map, so there's a key value pair. There's a first and a second that comes in the pair. So I just go ahead and I destroy on destruction, I delete all the image pointers that I've newed up, and then I clear the images out. Um, so coming back here again, this is templated, that's why this is in the header. But uh, tell me a t-type. And what I will do is, first off, I'll check to see if your resource name is found as a key in my map. And if I don't find it, then yeah, I'm adding a new resource. So I, just, I can just go ahead and say images at resource name is new t, whatever type is. And then I can, I'm just printing out just so you can see it on the screen. Okay, I'm adding a new image to the map. There's a new resource being added. And if I use this function and it comes back as something that is not the end iterator, then I know there's already something there. So I wanna make sure, you know, like you could do, what could you do? You could either say that I'm not never gonna replace the resource that's in there and basically return something that says, nope, sorry, couldn't do that because you already have an, you already have a resource named Brad or whatever. But in this case, what I do is I eliminate what was previously there and I replace it with the new type. There's nothing, you know, which way is right, which way is wrong of the two that I just described. It completely depends on you. But for this example, I am replacing the old image with the new one under the same resource name. Okay, so yeah, so delete whatever's there, replace it with a new T, and then print out that I've replaced that image. Okay, so coming back along here, uh, when it comes to this, I say, okay, I already did, already did the destructor, and all we have is delete and get, and it's the same basic idea. When you tell me a resource, I'll try to see if it's in there, and if it's in there, I'll erase it, otherwise I won't do anything. Because if I can't find the resource, there's nothing to delete, and if I can find it, then I will delete it and erase it out of the map. And the same with the get. You know, basically you're looking at the same exact thing, just slightly different here. You're like, well, if I can find it in there, I'll return, I'll return the image pointer. And if, I, if it's not in there, I'll return null pointer, basically to say, nope, there is no resource of that name found in the map. And so there's nothing to return. Okay, so coming back, so these images, what am I talking about here? I just set this up real fast and dirty just to kind of give you an, a little tiny example. Image is a base class, that's why it has a virtual destructor, and it also has a pure virtual function for printing out. And of course, again, this is just a simple example just to kind of get you going. So I have a JPEG, I have a PNG, and I have a GIF, and this print function just overrides just to print out, just so you know what kind of object you're dealing with. I have a JPEG, I, ha I am a PNG, I am a GIF. Okay, and then I just, to finish this all up, I wrote some code here to handle a, basically just a little runner, just to handle a little menu system where you can add, delete, get images, and then exit the program when you're happy with everything. So just to show you everything here, oops, it's running. Okay, it is compiling. So I say, okay, there's, there's nothing in there to start. It's an empty, so if I try to get anything, Brad says, nope, no image found. And then it says, okay, on the, on the way back it says, oh, the null check 
on the way back here, when I tried to uh, when I tried to get an image here, it says, yep, there was no resource that came back. This came back as null pointer. So it returns and says, oh, the null check found null pointer. So yeah, there's nothing. You should not do anything with the return that comes back. But what about the same thing? What if I try to delete Brad? It says, nope, no image found. There's nothing to delete. OK, I'll try adding Brad. I want to add it as a JPG. And so, OK, fair enough. And they say, OK, what if I get image now of Brad? And it screams out, oh, I found the image. And it says, I am a JPG, just like I said. So what happens now if I try to go back and say, I'm adding, I'm adding Brad. And this time I want to be a, P, a, a PNG instead of a JPEG. And they go, yep, it was replaced. Because Brad was already in there as a resource. And it was a JPG a second ago. But now when I go to get it again, now it comes back as a PNG because it's been replaced in the editor. Or, I'm sorry, in the manager. And I mean, you say like it's pretty simple stuff here when it comes, you know, it's just, a, it's just a map with extra steps. And so now if I want to add another resource, you know, instead of Brad, I can just say wall or something like that. And they say, oh, that's a GIF. And now I can say get image and I can say, you know, wall. And it'll tell me it's a GIF. And then I can get the image for Brad. And it's, and it's a PNG. Get image for paddle. And it replaces and it finds nothing. And so forth and so on. And so now, you know, I delete Brad, I can delete wall, I can delete everything. And now again, because it's been deleted out, nothing gets returned for each of these. And it's and again, it's just it's just a manager. It's just keeping track. You know, it's making sure that I'm only creating one image type, that graphic. And you know, and, and then when I need it, everybody can share that one graphic. And so, and then the destructor, when, I, when I'm finally done with this program and I say, nope, I'm done, the destructor gets called and it frees up all the memory that is needed. And so, you know, basically, you know, all those, you know, of course, all the pointers, if you have pointers looking at this thing after it's deleted, yeah, they're dangling. I mean, dangling pointers is a big deal, but all the memory has been cleaned up. And the flyweight pattern has uh, basically no footprint at this point because all the newed up memory has been given back to the operating system. So here is your get choice. Here is your add image function. Here, notice how I can supply the, the templated parameter for the type, the JPG type, the GIF type, the PNG type, and supply the name depending on which choice was given. And it, say templated types are amazing like that. You know, like it's... It just makes life so much easier than having to figure out other ways to do things. In a way, it kind of removes uh, other design patterns like factory and things like that. Like you can, instead of having to worry about passing, you could pass the parameter in as opposed to passing like a hard-coded number or an enumeration type or something like that. You know, they both have their uses, but uh, as you can see, that's going on. So delete image just tries to delete, and then the get just tries to get, and then since there's a return value, just to see what came back, just to kind of test everything out. And then the main part of this is just really simple. Just keep doing choices, printing the menu, and keep doing choices till the user is no longer happy. So that pretty much covers the flyweight pattern as far as, you know, just it's, you know, relatively, it, it sounds, all these patterns sound so difficult. But at the end of the day, when you just, when you, when it clicks for you, and it's like, oh, it's kind of like, and then especially when you're dealing with more and more of these, you start, you kind of start seeing the patterns in the patterns and how they can all kind of fit together. It's pretty amazing how, how it all kind of works together. And, uh, but if you know a better way, or if you have some, uh, you know, some ideas or questions, you can always get a hold of me here on uh, YouTube, or you can get me at swordb at cud.edu, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And as always, thanks for sticking it out with me. Have a great day, everybody, and uh, we'll see you next time.